Hi, everybody, and welcome to another session of the Media Ed Club. We are so excited that you have joined us today, and we are so excited to have uh, Maria Polsky joining us today. Uh, we will be discussing one of Maria's um, research articles, and this session is very, very exciting because part of um, what Maria Polsky will be presenting with us is why there might be a case for optimism um, in the communication space. So yes, yes, we are very excited about that. So I'll give you a little bit of- um... In you some optimism, right? Now. Yes. So thank you. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I'll give you a little bit first. of background on Maria now. Uh, Maria Polsky received her PhD in general philology at Moscow Lomonosov University. She's based in Chicago um, and she teaches communication, linguistics and humanity at East West University. Her research interests include um, theory of culture, which spans the structure, growth, and selection of cultural phenomena, communication theory, which covers the structure, growth, and accumulation of communication media and the influence of medium on audience, and practical pedagogy. All of these for creating a teachable system for undergraduate students to be aware of the cognitive skills that are promoted by different communication technologies. Um, so today, Maria will be talking about um, the article, uh, Digital Media May Cultivate Awareness and Responsibility in Users, A Case for Optimism. Um, I will share the link to um, the research article in just a second and hand it over to Maria. And we still have some people joining us, so let me admit them into the room and have a full group here. Okay, um, at this time, I'll hand it over to Maria. Maria, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for joining us and please um, tell us more. And I'll also share my screen so everyone can see um, some slides that you have shared with us. Thank you. Francie is very kind. She's taking care of, of my slides because, of course, technology. Uh, and uh, I will be uh, discussing today mainly the class that we offer at East West University, uh, where we look at uh, different ways of thinking and how we can combine and balance them. Uh, this is a required humanities seminar. Uh, and I hope you will agree that there is a case for optimism, but no one said it's going to be easy. Uh, so uh, we will have to do a lot of work. Um, and that is the last slide. Uh, so if we could go to the first one. Yeah. Um, I think the key word uh, I would like to emphasize and we cover with uh, students is awareness. It is uh, like, uh, as we say in class, uh, like writing on cigarette packs. Uh, smoking can harm you. And once you understand how smoking can harm you, it's up to you to decide what to do about it. So uh, we uh, discuss what cognitive skills each technology promotes in human beings and then how it can be um, used to our advantage. Next slide, please. Francia, can you click next? Yes. Uh, and um, uh, th this is uh, the uh, packet that I distribute to students. It is a collection of different readings, which gradually, gradually take students through accumulation of different technologies. I know that in media literacy, media education, we focus a lot on uh, digital media. But um, the focus of today's talk is that before digital, we had four other communication technologies, and each of them created certain um, types of society. Uh, and now that we have added digital on top of it, we should still remember what uh, is uh, uh, what was before. 
uh, you'd be surprised how much students don't realize because uh, Gen Z, they think that uh, digital technology has always been here. Uh, so uh, again, the focus uh, is on building up to digital technology. In class, I always say, don't worry, it will be a modern contemporary class of, with contemporary issues, but we're going through history so that we understand where we stand. Now, the table you're looking at now is the midterm. Uh, it takes about five minutes, uh, five weeks to go through every layer. But uh, in this uh, company, I think it's going to take us about five minutes. Brace yourselves, buckle up. Uh, so, uh, we spend uh, two class periods discussing uh, uh, what, uh, how oral language appeared, well, hypothetically, and what kind of uh, skills and society it created. Then when writing was invented, how it changed the society. When printing press was invented, how that changed the society. What does TV do to us? And then uh, after week uh, four, we finally begin to talk about digital. But at least now students have the context. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, uh, so these are the answers. Uh, um, oral uh, communication gives us emotional intelligence, awareness of uh, people's body language. Uh, people believe in the magical power of words and immediacy and repetition is the nature of the medium because the medium of oral language is airwaves and they disappear. Uh, again, I'm rushing through this, but I do have the entire packet which I can share with everybody. It's in Google Docs, uh, so you can uh, read and understand slowly. Um, then we, when we invented writing, uh, we have, first of all, wrote down canonical texts and that created Orthodox religion. Um, then uh, we um, uh, wrote formal grammars and uh, developed a more detached, logical, and individualistic type of thinking. But that's, that only goes for those who were literate. When printing press was invented, that still mm, spread across the entire society because literacy rates went up. And now with the printing press, we have the ability to uh, follow complex and nuanced arguments uh, and ability to delay judgment. Uh, and that is something that we uh, reinforce because all the students in this class, while we're discussing all of this, are also required to read a novel. As they're reading the novel, they're experiencing these print level skills where they need to follow a complex uh, argument. Well, not maybe an argument case of a novel, but definitely nuanced uh, representation of things. And it is not very easy for those who predominantly operate in their TikTok brain. But at least we discuss explicitly. This is what you feel when you're reading. This is what you feel when you're on TikTok. How, uh, how can you explain the difference? Uh, then, um, I'm sorry, moving on. Television uh, adds visual li uh, literacy, ability to analyze images uh, in the best case scenario and pure entertainment without any active thought in the worst case scenario. And then we move on to digital. Usually uh, students are a little on the defensive with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder because they're used to everybody saying how digital is bad. This is why it's always uh, healthy uh, when we talk about the good things about digital media. It trains uh, a very important skill of quick decision-making, very important uh, ability to scan and choose. It uh, trains short-term memory. It is used in um, Alzheimer's treatment. And short-term memory is important. Uh, so... Um, we talk about all the good things about digital media. And then we talk about ability to maintain all the skills, because if you practice something a lot, then whatever you don't practice, of course, uh, fades, use it or lose it. And we talk about the need to practice this 
um, a, a complex and nuanced thinking in the print form, uh, in addition to uh, the digital literacy skills. Then we move to artificial intelligence uh, and discuss what possible cognitive skills artificial intelligence can train with us. And um, one of the things we discuss is that uh, AI puts a premium on human personal voice and on human authenticity. So you can start making money uh, by being authentic or teaching people to be authentic because uh, boring, cliche drudgery will be done by AI. And of course, uh, uh, we can substitute, for example, television. I mean, nobody watches television anymore. So you can substitute it by virtual reality or instead of AI, you can say virtual reality or whatever other technology you want to add. You could add radio to uh, these um, uh, to these layers, for example, or telegraph. Mm. Can we go to the next slide, please? And tell me if I'm going too fast. <laughs> uh, one of a separate assignments that I had to create for students is uh, an assignment uh, about what is a complex nuanced argument. You'd be surprised how many people couldn't formulate that. Uh, first of all, we had to look up the word nuance in the dictionary. Uh, then what arguments are considered complex and a lot of people went Google to find the answer. Uh, I've been teaching this class for uh, uh, using this set of materials for four quarters. So a year, approximately a year. Uh, and routinely we have to discuss what is a complex argument. Uh, and then we discuss what is it in the form of the printed page that makes you slow down, that makes you learn uh, how to de delay judgment and wait for the end. Um, a few times people would use their TikTok brain, TikTok skill, and grab the first sentence of the text because you know how on uh, digital media we're supposed to grab attention in the first seven seconds? In academia, it's not necessarily so. You have to wait for a couple of paragraphs. So uh, we discuss how uh, a, an argument develops and that you need to read to the end. And then uh, students, I literally ask them to say, do you think it is a useful skill? Most people upon contemplation say, yes, it actually is a useful skill because they had stopped themselves before and they had thought about the level of complexity, the issues of immigration or race relations or uh, anything that is political. Uh, and even relationships in the family are complex and nuanced, so you cannot express it in seven seconds. Uh, and most people agree that yes, it is useful. Remember, the entire time they are reading a book, so they cannot complain because they're developing the skill of slowing down and following nuance. Next slide, please. I am sharing here with you um, the, uh, some of the reactions that stunned me. Uh, one student said, before your class, I had never read a book. And now I have read two. Also, I had never been in a library, and now I have been at two. I don't want to think how this person went through high school without ever completing a book. Uh, but I think it is possible to just uh, bluff through assignments. But in, in any case, this kid slowed down and read two books. Another student, I didn't know how digital technology came around. I always thought that it was around since the beginning of time. Because as Gen Z, it has been around since I was born, and I never thought to see how it, I would survive without it. Um, I notice in a lot of textbooks uh, for media literacy, there is a lot of um, emphasis on the new technologies do this. And we almost take for granted the existence and mastery of the previous technologies. 
And I'm finding that this framework that I described now can be more practical because first we need to introduce students to the old technologies uh, and then we can compare. But talking about the new technologies is not uh, uh, is not for Gen Z. For them, it's not new. It's been here, like the sun and the moon and Beyonce. Another uh, student uh, writes, something that really caught my attention was how writing was invented. It really surprised me that at one point in time, letters didn't exist, and therefore schools also didn't exist. I've never done research on that, but in my own world, I believed school was always a requirement because I believed it was always around. I also didn't think that letters and writing are created. I believed it was just there. All right, can we go to the next slide, please? Um, this is the example that I think I already talked about. I gave students an assignment where they were supposed to find an answer at the end of paragraph two, where it says, we propose the following outline of the components of human culture. And the question is, how do authors define culture? And uh, I expected people to reach the end of paragraph two and uh, analyze the table. Instead, I received the answer based on sentence number one. Uh, that culture can, can be studied from many angles, for example, history, nature, and origins of culture. And uh, some people even went as far as line two, uh, for example, applied value and the ability to influence the life of society. So I had, again, to do a little discussion with class, how you're supposed to finish reading. Uh, and um, yes, uh, Digital media do not practice the relevant skills uh, for students to understand something long and complex uh, because the complex things usually are structured like some people argue, however, or on the one hand, on the other hand. Uh, it's, it's a skill that we need to practice with students a little more. It, it's not something that comes natural to them. Um, can we go ne to next slide, please? Oh, uh, that is part two of the midterm. In addition to talking about cognitive skills uh, that are developed by different media, we also talk about uh, social influences because each time there is a new technology, uh, schools change their curriculum, new genres of communication and art appear, uh, new levels of morality are promoted, new jobs are created. Uh, so in, in, I always say each time somebody screams bloody murder, oh my God, oh my God, this job is dying. But we've been through that several times, so don't worry. Um, this, this is what the part two of the midterm looks like. I uh, don't know if you can see it, but there it is. Uh, people are supposed to fill in this table. Uh, for example, when, uh, yep, mm -hmm. Harold Innes, thank you. Uh, uh, so money was really created as a genre after writing was invented because we need to write on the money or to chisel or to, to stamp on the money, the name of the king. Mm, and then with printing press, money became printed. Uh, usually that shocks students because it puts them in a bigger frame of mind. Okay, um, uh, let's uh, move on to the next one. Next slide. Uh, what I have been describing is called a cumulative approach, and it is one of the questions on the final or midterm, depending on how the class goes. Explain a cumulative approach. What uh, does it involve? A cumulative approach claims that the invention of the new layer of technology does not cancel out the previous layers. It may increase, uh, enhance, change, 
put museum value on something instead of a uh, practical value, but uh, we do not kill the previous layers. Um, when we look at this um, chart, this triangle, I ask students, what are your strongest uh, layers? And, um, well, not this one, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not this one, a different one. Uh, how about this? <laughs> Imagine that uh, we're not talking about morality here, but about um, mm, communication technologies. So tribal morality would correspond to oral level of communication. Religious morality will correspond to written, uh, national morality would correspond to print communication, and global morality would correspond to uh, the internet. I hope you see that uh, it's related. The uh, more people a communication medium can encompass, the wider your circle of care, the, the bigger your circle of morality, so to say. But anyway, oral, written, print, and internet. I ask students, which one is your strongest? People usually say either oral or digital uh, internet. And very few people say written or print. To which I usually respond, you're welcome. We're giving, you're going to develop the middle level of your skills. You are already great at the bottom, oral, at the top, digital. We need to practice more your middle level, write, written and print, because that's what gives you an ability to use complex thinking. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, one important thing, uh, when I was preparing this um, reader for students, uh, this textbook, I, I usually experiment on my own children uh, and their friends. So I hired a couple of friends of my children and uh, my uh, daughter said, mom, the field has evolved. You still stuck on the dead white guys. Uh, Carol Dennis, uh, Marshall McLuhan, Neil Postman. Uh, so um, 20 year olds, uh, people who major in anthropology, social work, pointed out to me that uh, an important bit was missing. It's the colonial power of developing literacy. Uh, the uh, societies with uh, printed and written texts come into oral societies, pick them out of their land and impose their legal system uh, and, uh, uh, and their economic system, which is all based in literacy. So that gave us also an opportunity to talk about the power of different technologies in disenfranchising uh, and uh, empowering parts of society. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and one of the readings we uh, discussed uh, with students was McLuhan uh, describing the difference between an oral brain and a written brain, where oral brain believes in the magical power of words, but a uh, literate brain doesn't. And then students actually uh, circled me back to modern days and said, however, self-talk helps. Uh, we are taught to use positive self-talk, which means words do have power, and self-affirmations do have power. It, it gave us another opportunity to look at the dead white guys uh, and their prejudice towards the power of literacy and uh, how they were ignoring the power of oral speech. Okay, moving on. Next slide. Um, emotional response time. Here is another little reading included in um, my packet. Uh, I don't want to call it textbook because it's really a reader. It's a collection of uh, student-friendly, user-friendly excerpts from the founders of, of the field who can be useful. Uh, so this one is from Nicholas Carr, uh, uh, The Shallows. There is a lot from Nicholas Carr in my packet. Um, 
a human brain very quickly demonstrate reacts to a uh, physical pain but the more sophisticated mental process of emphasizing with psychological suffering unfolds much more slowly. So we discuss with students how experiments are done uh, on brain reactions that you put electrodes to your brain, you, they give you a sad story, they see how quickly you react and which parts of your brain react. So when a story describes somebody's physical pain, our reaction is immediate. When a story describes somebody's psychological suffering, our reaction is delayed. And then we discuss scrolling on TikTok on Instagram. And I lead students to say that in the scrolling mode, it is impossible to emphasize with people's psychological suffering. And that leads us to the uh, uh, type of material that you expect on TikTok or you should be putting on TikTok and what other things you need to practice in order not to be um, coarse and desensitized to human suffering. All right, next slide. Uh -huh. So um, now we have finally reached the digital layer. See how we have spent five or six weeks, depending on how strong is the class, five or six weeks getting up to it. And uh, this is what we discuss. Um, so a while ago, I read John Dowd's article in Explorations in Media Ecology, and he said, prime biases of digital media. Prime, P, personalization, R, uh, rapidity, I, integration, there are even yoga pants, which can tell you if you're doing your exercise correctly. So they integrate it into uh, the rest of your life. Uh, mobility and entertainment. So those were his prime biases. So I thought, yeah, cool. Let's do a different one. Uh, here comes the uh, optimism uh, part. Uh, how can we... Uh, master digital level uh, successfully. We need self-control and awareness and the feeling of responsibility. If uh, we practice self-control, responsibility and awareness, that can lead us to using digital media in the best possible way, maximizing its benefits. It can lead to cosmopolitanism. Uh, it can lead to our self-understanding, our responsibility better. Responsibility is the key word for the class. The natural tendency of um, uh, digital media is towards broad reach and speed. It can, if you give in to just broad reach and speed and superficiality without responsibility and wellness of self-control, you get material that is shallow. You will be dragged into tribal bubbles. It can develop addiction. It gives you temptation. You stay in your entertainment mode forever. Uh, in class, we do uh, games where I ask students to come up with their own acronism, uh, ac uh, acronyms. Uh, they, uh, they come up with amazing stuff. Uh, and uh, this game with uh, acronyms helps us play with different types of cognitive skills. Uh, analysis, so A can stand for analysis, just as it can stand for addiction or awareness. Um, mature mindset, uh, uh, ease, E for easy, uh, and students come up with amazing stuff. But as long as we all uh, understand that responsibility and awareness and self-control are the key requirements, uh, then I think we kind of have a case for optimism. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, in the concluding discussion, uh, I ask students to... Um, look at the effects of digital media, again, from the bird's eye point of view, 
uh, and see which uh, consequences are important and which are unimportant. We will have spent uh, a week at least discussing polarization and tribalism, and I'm bringing them back to complex argument. Uh, because I really need students to repeat several times in writing that in order to develop my ability for complex and deep thinking, I need to read printed texts. One of the assignments is um, to create their uh, daily schedule or weekly schedule up to them uh, to, uh, for practicing their cognitive skills. We discuss an analogy. If you go to the gym, you practice upper body. Uh, one day you practice legs. Uh, no, you work out upper body. You work out legs. You got to work out your core every day. Uh, core is the most important. And I have found that that uh, reached quite a few students. Uh, so we're uh, um, saying, we say in class that uh, digital media is like working out your upper body. Legs, uh, wor working out legs is like practicing oral skills. Working out your core is reading, slow, deep thinking. And everybody says, you got to work out your core every day. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Um, this is the key uh, sentence from my dissertation director, Yuri Rajdestinsky, who always said, taught us, modern communicator should be competent with each medium of communication. Again, I uh, put it in uh, the discussions, then I put it in the midterm, then I put it in the final. Explain what it means, explain how you are going to make yourself competent with each medium of communication. Uh, so um, I guess uh, what I was, um, what I meant when I said there is a case for optimism is that if we in schools adopt uh, this accumulative approach and very explicitly show students, this is why practicing your digital skills is great, but also this is why you need to practice reading. Uh, and uh, we, if we in schools explicitly discuss um, cognitive biases and ability to catch nuance, then um, uh, and the need to make a schedule, there should be a certain amount of hours per week when you practice deep thinking. Uh, then uh, explicitly discuss responsibility and awareness. Uh, the article that Francie was talking about in the beginning includes the results of a survey that we did uh, with um, users of digital media asking mainly uh, how they understand those temptations that are created by digital media, by the fast scrolling environment. Uh, and uh, what they do when temptations come and how they understand their responsibility. Everybody understood responsibility. Everybody uh, had tools to deal with the temptations. There's not one single person who said, oh, no, I didn't realize that that's happening. Uh, so I'm thinking that probably, uh, as usual, uh, the dangers of digital technology will hit mostly vulnerable populations, uh, which are the kids whose parents don't care, kids whose parents don't um, pay attention to the, to the children and to their own use of digital media. So I think it is super important to educate the parents we were even joking in uh, my class the, in the previous quarter that this package should be required reading during prenatal care. Uh, so the uh, young couple signs up for prenatal care and they get this so that they can avoid giving their kids digital devices so that they can start uh, pre, uh, preparing themselves. Uh, so that they would read books to their children. 
um, instead of uh, uh, thinking that digital media is the new thing, so we need to emphasize those skills. Uh, if you remember uh, when I was reading out the reactions from students, the young man who said, before your class, I had never read a book. His parents gave him a computer when he was four years old. He is a mm, healthy young person. He spent a lot of time outdoors. He's an athlete. Mm, and he's great with computers. But he couldn't for the life of him answer questions based on the chapter. He barely scraped a B in the class um, with enormous effort by forcing himself to sit down and read the book and read the assignments. Who is skimming through the surface? And it's his parents' fault. They wanted to do the best for the poor child. They gave him a computer. They should instead have been reading books with him. Uh, and his uh, final project in class was, how can we save the current generation? And uh, oh, both, of course, yeah, I, I meant both. Uh, giving a computer would probably be uh, a little later. Shouldn't, shouldn't happen at four years old. I, I think uh, American Academy of Pediatrics says five years for digital tools. Um, but anyway, the guy's uh, final chapter was how to save current generation, and he used himself as uh, a model what not to do. Right, so um, I think that is the end of my slides. I'm sorry if I was going too fast. I tried to leave a room for discussion. So if we'd like to break, well, uh, whether or not you like it, we're going to break in discussion groups. Uh, and if possible, talk about um, the uh, value of a cumulative approach in pedagogy. Uh, how we sh This is what I maintain. We should explicitly talk about self-control, awareness, and responsibility. And sh we should explicitly talk about the digital skills for your brain as opposed to uh, reading skills. And we should explicitly include long forms in our curriculum for digital, uh, for, for media education. Media literacy should include understanding what print does for us. Sorry if I'm beating the dead horse. Okay, groups. Okay, I'll go ahead and create some breakout groups. You will be assigned and Marie and I will be um, joining if need be. But also, if we're hearing correctly, Maria, everyone in the breakout rooms will be discussing um, the cumulative approach and what they got from your presentation and sharing some insights of what they learned and how print, incorporating print texts in education and um, media literacy education is important, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that, I'll create the breakout rooms. We'll have 10 minutes for discussion and we'll be back at 11.50. So everyone can share, everyone from each breakout room can share a little bit of what they discussed. And with that, we'll close the session. See you in 10 minutes. Thank you. Um, I don't think I can type in chat, but can I, let me see, let me see. Or both is there. Okay, yes, uh, let me see. Wrong button. That's okay. But in the That's left okay. I left the chat. So in Hazelwood, which is a high school in Missouri, we had people whose whose fight started on their cell phones, uh, but became uh, violent. And there's a race issue involved. Um, but the attorney general of the state came in and said it's because of diversity, equity, and inclusion education that this black girl beat up this white girl, right? And it was like hugely racially charged, and he immediately went there. Uh, to presumably score political points because he's up for re-election in a in a red red state. Um, mm. But there was proven to be so much cyberbullying before this physical fight um, that the NAACP got involved, and they're like, uh, "There's no reason to uh, immediately go to that point with this fight." There was there's a whole history there, <clears throat> but it was very much of it. Sven, to your point. Uh, on cell phones. Yeah, it might have petered out over time before you have this instantaneous device to escalate things so quickly. 
Yeah, and to keep up old fights, right? Yeah. So um, I'm not sure what my phone is doing. I, I see Mark uh, and uh, I don't know if everybody else came back from the meetings. Yes, it <laughs> seems like everyone's back. Um, yes, it seems like everyone's back. Uh, and I know usually in groups we do get distracted and start talking about things that were not necessarily the key point of uh, the main presentation. <laughs> uh, but uh, we wanted to hear uh, what you discussed in groups. Somebody? Oh, I realized I was unmuted, so I'll go for. Oh, actually, Lynn, maybe oh, we were you, together. Erica, you go first. You go first. Oh, okay. I was going to actually say how we talked about empathy. And so that could be a segue to Lynn talking um, how empathy as a social emotional skill um, for kids is a critical element in building that awareness that is required in like understanding. Um, like that complex nuanced judgment and empathy for yourself, empathy for others, and then being able to act upon it. So that that was kind of what we were discussing and how that tied into what you were teaching about. Thank you. Yes, yes. And empathy takes time to develop. So it's not something that can be developed very easily with TikTok. Yeah. So, so I'll go next. So I, I just want to say, Maria, what you have is brilliant. I think it's so important and so necessary to give kids the continuum of time because they think they this stuff was all here. They don't even have the imagination anymore and the curiosity to understand the power of the, the invention of language, uh, what the printing press did. And I love how you have these intersections and you're making them analyze and think what they have now has not always been there and what the future may be. And it really... They, it also enhances their analytical skills, which may be lacking too. I'm hearing in my world of KidsBridge that kids don't know how to have conversations. So we have kids that are in a deficit of communication and analytical skills, reading skills. And then I put in the chat, you may not have seen, is that it would be helpful to me and maybe others to have research that shows that giving a child a laptop, a computer, an iPad at two or three is so damaging, but is there research that proves that? Uh, yes, there is. Uh, American Academy of Pediatrics and APA uh, have done a lot. Uh, I cannot cite the names of specific people, but yeah, uh, just go, uh, I, I put it in the chat also. Just go American Academy of Pediatrics or APA and ask them. Uh, Thank you. They'll be Thank yeah. you. Wonderful. Uh, stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I have a couple of other websites that I will open when my computer repairs itself uh, and I can send it to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have also Bye shared now. some links in the chat um, with some videos that Maria has posted on her LinkedIn page that describe her research in 20 seconds or less. They're very, very um, engaging and interactive. So they're in the chat and we welcome you to visit them and share them. Um, there will also be a recording of to, uh, today's webinar on our Media Education Lab event page. If you miss anything or you want to revisit anything um, that was shared during the presentation. So we're very excited that Maria has um, shared her work with us. And I just put um, that in the chat as well. Um, um there is a link to the Google Doc, uh, which includes all of my materials. So feel free to use it as uh, your textbook. And I cannot publish it because it's too expensive uh, because of um, permissions. So let's let's just use it. Uh, it's okay to use it in classrooms. Um, and uh, the links to um, uh, my uh, LinkedIn, uh, I think Francia put a couple of videos, and I also posted those videos on TikTok and Instagram. So, yes, I think um, that 
is pretty much everything we had to cover today. So we are very grateful that you all joined us today and we're, we are grateful for Maria to sharing with, um, with us all of her research and her practice. Um, we invite you to keep joining us at the Media Ed, Ed Club. Um, we'll be back next month. And also feel free to make any suggestions of cool books, podcasts, research, research articles, or any media that you are into right now and that you think is worth a discussion, you can always email us at the Media Education Lab and we will be happy to have you as a host and lead uh, an engaging discussion like the one we had today. Thank um, so, you. Yeah, with that, I think we will be closing. Uh, Maria, I'll let you share your last words um, and then we'll go. Thank you very much, and I hope to uh, to stay in touch with anybody who is interested in using this approach in class, uh, because we could exchange materials and ideas, uh, and we could see how that can be really more broadly mm, introduced to media literacy education. And I will see Maria's LinkedIn in the chat as well, so you can stay in touch with her. Right? Um, also, don't don't finish the meeting yet because I haven't copied all the helpful links that people sent. Okay, there you go. Um, thank you all for joining us, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. I've been around.